may be seated. Abraham is 99 years old, and God said, now you will have children, and while I'm at it, I will lengthen your name. Abraham, a man of great faith, easily took on that new identity, not being afraid of what his life will become. Just the opposite, in our gospel reading today, Peter, with an anxiety filled with fear, when he hears Jesus explaining what was to become of him. Peter's rattled and distraught. He pulls Jesus aside, begging him not to say such things. He pleads with Jesus, do not become something that is outside of my own perception, outside of my own comfort. Peter fears the path of Jesus. Peter fears the path for himself. So Jesus reminds Peter of the work of Satan lives in fear and to put it behind you. The work of Jesus and the teachings of Christ brings us into our faith and to place that before us. This past Friday, I took my boys down to the Jamestown settlement and I wanted to make sure they saw the story in the correct order, so we went directly to the ships, the ships that the English used to cross the Atlantic and to find their future on those Virginia shores. It was a breezy day as we climbed upon those vessels and tried to think for a moment, what would it feel like to be crammed in there with all those people over that five-month journey? Surely a journey that was filled with fear and confusion of the unknown. And once they arrive to the shores, human nature kicks in as it always does, and they built, making walls of their fort that would go all the way around with holes just big enough that they could peek outside or place a gun through in case they felt threatened. But then we made our way through the different dwellings inside of this fort where we saw that each place had a specific purpose for the community, drying skins or the blacksmith, the place for the artillery, homes, and a chapel. We went inside that Church of England type chapel, Harrison and John David and myself, and we took a selfie picture up in the pulpit. And as I was there with my boys, I thought about what was the message of the preacher of that day? A preacher that lived in a situation where surely each moment they lived between that competition of fear and faith. What will become of us now that we're here? As we started this morning with the great litany I think it's so important for us to experience this together during Lent. It's kind of like this complete list of fears spelled out in prayers to God. And I found personally that every few years there's one prayer in particular that resonates the most to me of either something that I have overcome in the previous year or something that I need to overcome some prayer that addresses the evil placement of my worries and of my wants. And I see that such prayers are simply seeds, seeds in which Jesus places upon us, seeds that are a challenge waiting for when our heart is ready to receive them. There's a saying that says it perfectly, it's not within our power to place the divine teachings directly on somebody's heart. 
All we can do is to place them there and when place them there on the surface of that heart. And it's only when their heart breaks that the seed will drop in. We hear this today that Jesus has placed on Peter's heart the course of his life. And Peter speaks out out of fear of how the seed simply weighs too much, it's more than he can bear, it's more than he wants to carry. But Jesus knows of Peter's heart, that very soon Peter's heart will break when he denies Christ three times and the cock crows and Jesus is put up to occupy the cross. Then the seed of today's lesson will drop into Peter's heart. Only then will Peter be strengthened by the teachings and bear fruit from those teachings. Only then will Peter's faith defeat Peter's own fear. The prayer seed that was placed on top of my head in 2016 is found in the great litany was for God to help me to give and to preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth so that in due time all may enjoy them. The great competition against my faith in that year was the fear of finances. In October of 2016, I went on a week-long clergy wellness retreat where I accepted that fear fully. And one of the exercises over the week was to write a letter to ourselves of what we hoped that we could overcome in the year ahead, where we can change, and then to come up with a game plan and to prayerfully live into it, seeking wellness. I received the letter in the mail in October of 2017. I opened it and saw throughout that my spiritual objectives was to spend less time focusing on financial stresses. And I smiled because I realized then the steps that I had taken, the strides that had been made with God's help already to move beyond this fear. And I found myself again this past week revisiting that prayer. At our vestry meeting on Monday, our senior warden and Russ Ryan challenged the whole vestry to participate at 100% of increasing our 2018 pledge. And I'm proud to be part of that 100% of our vestry leadership, but it was in that moment of when I filled out a new pledge card that I realized that that financial stressor seed had already dropped in my heart and was bearing fruit. That I recognized the heartbreak wasn't because of money in that year of 2016. It was the heartbreak of being away from my two sons. And thanks be to God, even that has changed in the course of my life. For I know that last year I would not have made that step of moving that simple decimal over one space to increase my pledge by 10%. But as I did it this year, it felt like I was moving a mountain off of my shoulders where faith had won over fear. Feeling confident like Abraham in God's work that lays ahead instead of feeling doubtful like Peter today. To truly give the fruits of God's blessings, to share them not only with myself and my boys, but with us as a community. And I'm grateful to be at this new place in my life. And so I raise to all of us today, what fears are hindering your faith? What seeds are waiting to be dropped into your heart so that they can bear fruit. 
And whether you think you know this or not, I challenge you to take home the great litany and to pray through those words and to find the prayer that you wrestle with the most and sit with that prayer. Live with that seed, for only in God's time, as your heart will come to a moment of breaking, that the seed can drop in, allowing you to grow closer to our God, closer to yourself, in the community in which we're called to come together and share in God's work. Amen.